Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to episode 7 of this little podcast series that we're doing over here. I do kind of have a name for it in the back of my mind, but I haven't decided if I'm going to go with it or not. Um, so I'm going to keep kind of meditating on that a little bit. Um, I kind of like it, but I'm not ready to, to make that decision yet. But I do want to give this some sort of name because I know it's not like a real podcast series. Um, so kind of stay tuned for that, but it's something that's in the works in the back of my mind. But today we are diving into episode seven. And I know I said it in my last episode that episode seven would come in like a month or so, but I just, I don't know. I couldn't wait. I'm really excited to, to film this video. And as you can tell from the title, I'm going to be sharing with you guys my testimony and I feel like this might have been a good episode to start off this podcast series with when I uploaded the first one five months ago, but at the same time, I'm so glad that I didn't film it back then because I have grown and learned so much in the last five months that my testimony has continued to change and evolve, and so there are a lot of things that I would have missed out on had I filmed this five months ago. So I feel like I'm in a good uh, place right now to kind of share my testimony. If you're not familiar with um, what, you know, a testimony is in this regard, it's basically um, my Christian walk, how I became a Christian, right? Um, how it's changed, how it's evolved, how I've gotten to where I am now. So I do have some talking points as usual. I have some notes because there are things that I definitely don't want to um, forget about. But this video really is just going to be me talking to you. I'm not going to be, you know, preaching or teaching you anything, um, at least not intentionally. But I'm just going to share. We're just going to talk. And I'm going to talk for as long as it takes. And I hope that you guys enjoy and. Who knows, maybe you will be able to take something away from my testimony story. So let's go way back in time. Um, I will say, I think probably a lot of you do know this, but maybe some of you don't. So I will off, I will start off with saying that when I'm talking about like my Christian journey, my Christian walk, um, I will primarily, you'll primarily hear me talk about my mom. Um, my dad is very much still in my life. My dad's family is very much in my life, but my parents did get divorced when I was about two years old. Um, so if you hear me really just talking about my mom, that's why. Um, but I love my dad. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I guess my story starts. So I, my parents split up when I was two, um, lived with my mom primarily, but would see my dad like five days a week pretty much every day after school um but I say that to say when I was in middle school um my mom did remarry and the man that she married was a Christian and so he I think was kind of like hey like come to church with me kind of deal um prior to that I mean I was raised Catholic I did my first communion I never did um, what's the other one? Communion, confirmation. I never got to that point because I think you do that when you're older. Um, but I was raised Catholic, so I did first communion. I learned how to do confessions. I learned I went to Sunday school every weekend. Um, so I feel like those beliefs were instilled in me at a young age. So when we started going to Christian churches in middle school, it wasn't anything like super new to me um and for the most part like catholicism and christianity like believe the same thing it's just that christianity is a little less um traditional we have different or you know less traditions and but the beliefs are pretty much the same right i think so um for the most part 
Um, so yeah, middle school started going to Christian churches, but I was, I was young at that point, right? I was going just with my, with my mom, with my family, right? Because that's what I was expected to do. Um, and I remember there was one church we went to, um, where I would go to like the, the kids classes. So you would stay for like praise and worship with your family and then after it was over you would get up and you would go to like the kids church while the adults stayed in the main room for the message and I remember I used to hate it and I don't really know why I hated it I just I didn't mesh well with a lot of the kids there um I just I just didn't like it I remember my mom used to get so mad at me she'd be like just go like what like what's the big deal and I would hate it and sometimes she would let me stay with her but a lot of times I did go because that's what was expected of me. So this was very, very young. This was like 10, 11 years old. Fast forward, because nothing really happened too much. Nothing else really happened in that like chapter of my life. But fast forward to the summer I turned 14. I had just graduated eighth grade. I was getting ready to go to high school in September, right? Big girl moves. And this, was, this is where it all started I think this is where my journey like really started uh my mom and I my mom saw an a commercial on tv I think newspaper tv I don't know she saw an ad somewhere for this church and it was very close to where we lived she thought it looked nice she had been looking for another church and so she said let's go and I don't fully remember, but knowing, like, me, <laughs> I was probably like, oh, gosh, okay, let's go. You know, not really looking forward to it. And I was very shy when I was younger. I still can be sometimes. I wouldn't say shy, but maybe a little more introverted sometimes where I like to sit back and observe. Um, but I've kind of, like, mostly grown out of that. But I used to be, like, painfully, painfully shy. So talking to new people, talking to other kids my age wasn't really my thing but I went and this is where it all started like I said this was the church where eventually once I got over my little shy phase this is where I made friends some of them that I still have to this day um a lot of family friends that you know my mom has gotten close to that are now like family to me these people are still very much in my life this church was a huge part of the way i turned out and what shaped me as a person this is where i really started to actually learn about god and, and in the bible um and i really like enjoyed my time there i would go twice a week sometimes more i would volunteer to be in like the the christmas and easter productions I worked behind the scenes. That's where I got into media and, and directing and studio cameras. And that led to the career that I have now outside of YouTube. This place was a huge part of my life. And I went there for 13 years about. Um, I still, I mean, I still consider it like my home church, although I haven't been going lately. We'll get into that. Um, but it was a huge part of my life and I will always, always be so, so thankful for that church and the people that I met there. Um, so like I said, I would go every Sunday, I would go every Thursday night to the youth group. It was middle school and high school kids and we would do praise and worship and we would do activities and then there would always be a lesson and, um, for a couple years there, like I had this group of like, it was like 10 of us and we hung out all the time we would do sleepovers we would like we were just like a little like a little family um and it was one of the best times of my life really i do remember i felt um a little like self-conscious sometimes where like i i didn't know much of like the bible i didn't know bible stories i didn't know how many books in, were in the bible i didn't know who I'm gonna throw out random names. I didn't know who Abraham was. I didn't know who Esther was. I didn't know what the stories were, you know, like I knew Jonah and the whale and Noah and the ark, like the popular ones, but 
you know, they would talk about things or we would play like trivia games in youth group and I'd be like, I don't know the answer. So I do remember that. Um, but at the same time, like I still, I still loved it. I still enjoyed it. I loved being there. Um, and so, yeah, this is where my, my relationship with God really actually started to develop. And it felt like a cool thing to do because I was doing it with all my friends that I met there. I was so involved in the church and I loved it. It was like my home away from home. Um, in high school, I remember all four years of high school, we went to this conference, this youth group and I, our church would send us and it was called Acquire the Fire. If any of you have ever been to an Acquire the Fire or know what I'm talking about, you have to comment down below. Um, we loved it. It was a big, I think it was, I don't remember if it was two or three days, but it, I think it was two days, big conference, one weekend in the spring and you would go and it was a, in a big like a stadium, like where you would go to a, a major concert and there would be praise and worship. All these, fa these famous Christian bands would be there. They would put on skits. One year they brought in like a Christian comedian and it was a room of like 24,000 teenagers just praising God and worshiping as one whole body. And I will never forget those years that we went there. Like amazing experience. So many teenagers like giving their life to Christ and, and, and stuff. With that being said, though, it was it's hard to explain. It was almost like like we, we would come home from that trip and we would be on what we call like on fire for God, where you just want to you want to talk about him. You want to listen to Christian music like you're just so on fire and so passionate about your Christian walk and your relationship with God. And that's a great thing. Like we would come home. We were so excited. We wanted to continue to sing all the songs well, like looking back now, a month or two after the trip, that would kind of die down. And there there are many reasons for that. But, you know, we would kind of... The, 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 the excitement would eventually fade. And that happened all four years that, that we went. Um, and, you know, it's because we when you're in church and when, when you're with your Christian friends, especially as a kid, it's, it's more so as a kid. It shouldn't really be like this in your adult life. But as a kid, you're with your Christian friends and you're doing the thing and that's like the cool thing to do, right? But then you go to high school with your friends that maybe aren't of the same faith or don't really care about that stuff. And then that stuff starts to occupy your brain more than the other stuff. And so being on fire for God and all that, that starts to kind of transfer to the back of your brain. So yeah, that, uh, that, uh, that passion would eventually kind of die down. But I think being in that youth group throughout high school really actually kept me out of a lot of trouble. And I will always, always be thankful for it. I have memories that I will have for the rest of my life. Um, so, okay, so let's go past high school now. Graduated high school, graduated out of the youth group. Um, I went to college. But I ended up commuting to college because I lived so close to the university that I went to. It was like a 20 minute drive. So I commuted to save money. And that meant that I was still home, especially on the weekends. So I was still going to church, which was cool. And I think that that also kind of somewhat kept me out of trouble. Um, it kind of kept me more like accountable for things, I guess. Um, and this is the time where I was really like heavy into volunteering for the, my church's media ministry and again led me into the career that I'm in now. But so I was going to church pretty much every Sunday still throughout throughout college. Um, and I think that that was very good for me. And I actually started volunteering at my church's youth group that I was a part of because I just like didn't want to part with it. I don't know. I, it was such a big part of my life and I was still going to church that I was like, how can I not be a part of this youth group? So I started like volunteering, not so much teaching, but just lending a helping hand to the teachers that I loved. And again, that were a huge part of my upbringing. The thing here though, and I'm going to be really transparent here, was that I was going to church on the weekends, but m Monday through Saturday, I was very much living in the world, right? I was in college. I was going out to the college bars every Friday, Saturday, pretty much. 
And so I was very like one foot in the world, one foot in the church. And I will say like looking back now, I can feel how I, I've felt different than the people that I was going to school with. There was something, just something different. And I, I know now that it was because that there was, there was a calling on my life, but you know, I was out and I was having fun. And like I said, I was going to the bars, but I was different. I didn't want to sleep with someone different every single weekend. I didn't want to do a lot of the things that would be like the stereotypical college experience things. I just didn't. It just, it never, it never held any interest for me. Um, and now, like, looking back now, now it all makes sense. But in the time, you know, and some some of my friends were, like, they would notice. And they'd be like, oh, like, Sam's different. Like, Sam doesn't want to do that stuff. And I'm honestly looking back, like, I'm so, I'm so glad. But with that being said, I was still, I was still going out. And I was drinking a lot every Friday, every Saturday. Whereas now, like, I have a glass of wine and I feel it for, like, two days. But that's because I'm old now. But anyway, um... I was, like I said, very one foot in the world, but then I'd show up for church. And so I was very, I was very lukewarm. I was a lukewarm, what you call a lukewarm Christian, right? And I was listening to another podcast. Her name is Emmy Moore, I believe. And she was talking about being lukewarm. And she said, the definition of lukewarm, I wrote it down. The definition of lukewarm is liquid or food that should be hot, but isn't it's like it's gone cold it's not it's not as good anymore so it's not even something that's just like lukewarm doesn't just mean like room temperature it means something that should be hot it should be but it's not anymore so now it's not as it's not as fresh think of it as like a cup of coffee that kind of i mean i don't drink coffee but i've heard people say oh my coffee's it got cold it's gross now not to say that i was gross as a person but you know what i mean i should have been hot and I wasn't. That's why we call lukewarm Christians lukewarm, because that's that's the definition. And, you know, I I don't want to say I put on a good show, but I kind of did. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you guys a story, uh, and I've never admitted this, I don't think, ever, but I feel like this is important for me to say, because I want you guys to know that I don't sit here and try to be perfect Oh, I'm this perfect Christian that doesn't do X, Y, Z. I will never sit here and and say that to you. When I was, this was in 2019. So technically I had graduated college. This was the year after I graduated college. And I was still, again, volunteering, media ministry, church, whatever. It was St. Patrick's Day weekend, 2019. That Saturday, my friends and I had gone out, drank a lot. But there I was, I set my alarm. I used to set my alarm like before going out so that I knew the alarm was set for Sunday morning so I could get up and go to church. And at the time I remember thinking, wow, like I'm so proud of myself. Like, look at me, like I'm going to the bars, but I'm still showing up for church, which in hindsight, yes, at least I was there, but it, it wasn't super genuine. For me, for a, for a while there, going to church was almost like a social thing. It wasn't to go and get closer to God. It was just because I liked going and I liked seeing people that I loved and you know um that's those are two very different things two very different reasons to want to go to church so this St. Patrick's Day weekend I wake up Sunday morning I'm hungover headache stomach probably not feeling great but I get to church I get there on time I was not scheduled to volunteer that day to be on camera I was just there but then I get there and they're like oh we're down a camera person Sam would you mind jumping on a camera and I'm like sure all right whatever so I go and the way that this it used to be set up so the cameras were up on these like pedestals so you'd have to walk up a couple steps to get to the camera and you would stand there was no chair there was not you just stood for an hour hour and a half Eh, hour on camera holding the camera so your arms are locked your feet are locked it's very it's very uncomfortable well because i had been drinking the night before i was dehydrated and i didn't know that i was going to be on camera so i didn't prepare i didn't chug a whole bunch of water 
when I woke up. So I was dehydrated. I also, I don't think I ate that morning. Well, halfway through service, I started to get real nauseous. And then my vision starts to go. I saw, guys, I kid you not. I don't know if you've ever, I, I have a history of fainting, so I know these symptoms well. Um, my vision went black. My eyes were wide open. I was up in a very well lit room. I, all I saw was black. It was like someone had a blindfold. I could not see. And I started to panic. And I remember being on camera, right? Saw completely black and I just started going like this. <laughs> I started reaching for something to hold on to because it started to freak me out. That is the last thing I remember. The next thing I knew, I was on my back, on the church floor, looking up at the ceiling with a crowd of people around me. You girl fainted in front of the whole church. <laughs> my pastor was up there, so I know he saw me. And they called my mom because my mom was sitting in a section somewhat nearby. They called her over. And they, they try to carry me out of the, the sanctuary. And I remember I was, I was so embarrassed. I was so, so embarrassed. But I also like still didn't feel well. And so they try to like, the men try to like carry me out. And I'm like, no, no, no. Like I was so embarrassed. I was like, I can walk. I can walk. Like I'm okay. So I get up. They help me out. They take me to the church's kitchen. Ambulance comes. It's a whole thing. Meanwhile, the church is still going on. They carried on very well. It was very, you know, professional. Um... Took me to the kitchen, paramedics come, check my vitals. I was fine. I was just dehydrated and I fainted. And granted, yes, it was because I, I had no water that day, but had I not been drinking the night before, I wouldn't have fainted. I would have been dehydrated regardless, but I wouldn't have fainted. And even still, like people, I don't even think people really realized. I just told them like, yeah, I didn't eat or drink anything today. That's all it was, and it, and it does get hot when, you, when you're standing up there on a camera pedestal for an hour, not moving. You get uncomfortable, and you get hot. So all of that combined made me faint. But still, everyone was just like, oh, it's like it's Sam. Like, it's, she just like didn't eat or whatever. You know, no one chalked it up to the fact that I was out drinking the night before. Um, and... I think back to that now and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> it's so, I was so very clearly living for the world and then just going to church because that felt like that's what I needed to be doing or that's what I should be doing. That was the right thing to do. Um, so that's not such a great memory for me, but it's a big part of my testimony, right? For a long time. Well, I, I'll get into that. I'll, I'll save that. Going in line with my notes here. So the next thing I have written down. So shortly after, less than a year later, in the winter of 2020, it was actually February 2020, right before everything COVID happened, before the world shut down, I started working full time at the TV studio I work at now. And I worked every weekend. I worked uh, Wednesday through Monday. So I was off, I'm sorry. I worked Thursday to Monday. So my weekends were Tuesday, Wednesday for like two years there. So, and I worked morning shifts. So I worked 5 a.m. to two. So I missed church. I, could, I couldn't go to church. It wasn't a possibility for me. I would still go Thursdays sometimes to help with the youth group, but I couldn't go Sundays. And because I wasn't going to church and I wasn't feeding my spirit and I wasn't spending any time with God, I wasn't reading my Bible really. Um, for those two years there, my faith just took a back seat. I didn't, and, and, and you know what? I needed to take that shift. Like I'm, I don't regret taking that shift because I needed to get, I needed to do that shift to get where I am now in my career. So I, I'm not saying like, I'm not blaming my job. I'm blaming me, <laughs> you know? Um, I didn't go to church for, for two years, two, well, more, but it started because of that shift. <clears throat> and when you're not feeding your spirit, but you're still living in the world, you're going to follow the world and you're going to live for the world. 
And I would pray every once in a while. It's not like I, ne I, I never stopped believing, ever. In my whole 27 years of life, I never stopped believing. But it just took a backseat. It wasn't a priority. And that was, <laughs> that was my biggest mistake. And that led to a road of a lot of hurt, but also a lot of growth. And we'll, we'll, we'll get there. But my faith wasn't a priority. Now, in 2021... 2021? 2021, I entered into a relationship. This was my second long-term relationship ever in my life. And many of you have seen parts of it here on YouTube for the past couple years. Um, we are no longer in that relationship, if you missed that memo. Um, I don't know, I, I'm not going to talk too much about it, because it's not just my business to tell. Um... There's a lot I could say about it, but I just have to find a happy, healthy medium where I'm also still respectful because I never want to be disrespectful ever, especially on the internet for thousands of people to see. Um, but this relationship, all I will say is that this relationship is something that I wanted for years with this person, like years, like an embarrassing amount of years. And I look back now, being older, and I'm just like, Sam, <laughs> why? But anyway, I wanted this relationship for years. And I finally got it. And man, I held on to that relationship with everything I had in me, even when I should not have. This relationship became my priority. This person was the center of my universe. I put him before me. I put him before God. It was my world revolved around this human. Okay. Not to say I still didn't do things with my friends separately here and there, but my world revolved around this person. And that was my, I have no one else to blame for that but me. That was my mistake. It led to a lot of problems. Uh, more so, like, just for me, like mentally, internally. <clears throat> problems that I don't think I ever really even expressed to anybody because I don't think I realized it was a problem until the relationship was over. And I don't know what I was looking for. I don't know if I was looking for, like I thought that this person was gonna like complete me because a person can't completely, com can't comp words. A person can't complete you. They can make you better, I think. But a person can't completely you. It's gotta be two whole people that come together. And I wasn't whole. And I don't think he was either. And from what I see now, from the very beginning, I see that our that relationship, it wasn't as good as it looked on the outside to friends, family, and people on YouTube. It wasn't all bad. Especially mo most of it. I mean, I have happy memories. But um, there was just a lot that went into it. Uh, I had way more insecurities than I thought I did. Um, and there are, uh, now I know the reasons and where those insecurities came from. Um, but it's just, there's just a lot that went into that relationship. And uh, towards the end, there were things that came to light that were not so great. And... All I'll say, a big regret of mine was when I should have walked away, instead, I, I begged someone to stay with me and to love me. And you should never, ever, ever do that. The minute somebody tells you that they are unsure, as painful as it is and as painful as it will be, you gotta go. And I wish I could tell myself that version of me back then. I wish I could tell her that. But at the same time, I don't regret it because it showed me how selflessly I can love, how unconditionally I can love. And I'm actually very proud of that. I'm not proud of the way everything happened. And it's a shame the way that everything happened and the way that everything ended. But, um, 
yeah, there's just, you know, I'll never sit here and, and blame someone fully for something. It takes two. And there were a lot of issues in that relationship. But my, my biggest regret and the thing that I learned the most was that you cannot make someone the center of un your universe like that. And it's funny now, I like, it's just amazing how you look back and like, God is so intentional. He's so intentional. I remember it was a few days before that relationship ended. And it was the service that changed everything for me. I rededicated myself to God that day at church. And you know, I think I still have my notes, hold on. It's the very first entry in this notebook because the day after that service, uh, I went to CVS and I said I want a notebook so I could start taking church notes. I want to start going to church every Sunday because during throughout this relationship We would go to church for like holidays and then maybe once in a blue moon where we were like It was mo it was usually me and I was probably like, you know oh, I want to go to church this Sunday and he'd be like, yeah, 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 let's go and then we'd be like, yeah, we did our part We went to church My pastor uh, that I grew up with he used to call people like that CEOs Chris Christmas and Easter only Christians that's what I was for a while um and from this th so we went to service this day it was Sunday January 8th 2022 and this was when we were having a lot a lot a lot of relationship issues I, that relationship was no bueno anymore and we went to church you know to look for help I don't know we went to church and this was the, the service that changed everything for me. And it was all about, you know, things that can distract you from your Christian walk. It's about keeping your eyes on Jesus. Um, you know, it says, whatever, you des whatever desire you have, God put that in you and you have everything you need to get it. Um, distractions will hold you back. Um, it's about walking the good fight, keeping the faith. It just, it's really just about, like, not letting things of the world don't let that distract you from your walk and i remember sitting there and i felt so convicted but like in a good way and i was like yeah like i want that i don't want those distractions like i i want to and i and i remember i was so shook by it but like in a good way and we got in the car and i remember and I, this is not me this is just me sharing my experience it's not me talking bad about anyone i swear but I sat there and I remember I asked my ex, I said, what'd you think? And he was like, yeah, it was good. But I could tell that he didn't feel the way I felt. His soul wasn't stirred the way mine was. And I knew, I knew right then and there in my mind. I never said it out loud and then because I didn't want to. I didn't want to admit it. But I knew that that was going to be a problem. Because I knew that my life was about to change. And I... Hmm. And I knew he wasn't going to come with me. Wow. Sorry, that made me a little emotional. I wasn't expecting that to come out of my mouth, but it did. And it's true. Um, three, three days? Three days later, that relationship ended. And man, that was by far the lowest point of my life and it still gets me emotional it's like a mixture of sad tears and happy tears the sad tears being oh, pull yourself together the sad part being i wish that i could go back and hug that young version of me because she was so lost she didn't know her worth she didn't know what she deserved she didn't realize what she brought to the table her self-esteem was through the floor and she she was also made to feel like a lot of it was her fault and because her self-esteem was so low she believed it again not to say i was blameless because i wasn't but I know now that what I felt back then was not true and was not real, shouldn't have been real. So those are the sad tears. The happy tears that come with that is I can, I can see and I can feel how much I've grown since then. 
and now my relationship with God is stronger than ever. I know what I bring to the table. I have boundaries put in place. I know how to follow my intuition. Now, when something doesn't feel right, it's not right. Anything that's sent from God will not cause you hurt. It will not cause you confusion. And you won't have to work so hard to keep it. So it's a combination of happy and sad tears. And I think looking back on that chapter will always make me a little sad. Because back then, let me tell you, and even before the breakup, when things started to come to light, when things started to come to light, my whole world shattered everything i thought i knew everything i thought i had everything i thought i was going to have everything i thought i was so close to getting shattered in literally one second shattered and that's a really hard hurt to get through but with prayer quality time with god and therapy and family and friends. I have not only healed, I have surpassed where I was before. And I don't mean that in an arrogant way. I really don't. But I have just just learned and grown so much. Um, and you know what? All the hurt that I went through, I wouldn't take any of it back. Not a single thing. I wouldn't take it back because if those things didn't happen, I wouldn't have grown. If he didn't walk away from me, I probably wouldn't have because I wasn't strong enough to. He did me a favor by walking away because it forced me to grow. And I knew I have such a strong desire in my heart to get married and start a family and have beautiful children and and all that. I have such a strong desire for that. And I knew that I was going to have to put in the work to get through all the hurt and all the feelings of betrayal and just trust and and, and, and all that. I knew that I was going to have to put in the work. And I did. Because you can't bring all that into a new relationship. You just can't. You're literally doing it from the beginning. That's why I'll never understand people that get out of long-term relationships and that night will download a dating app. I just, I will never, I mean, I, I do get it. I get it because you're trying to fill that void. I get it. But it's just, it, it, you're dooming it from the beginning, I think. Anyway, I'm rambling. Um, so yeah, I, in January, I was... January, February, March, like that that time, I was a wreck, man. I I cried every day. I would randomly start crying at work. I would cry until, you know, here at home, I would cry until I couldn't breathe. I would call my mom at 2 a.m. mid panic attack because I just could I just couldn't. I, I it it was bad. It was really bad. My poor mom, she would wake up because she would she would go to bed early. She would wake up every every day at 11 30 p.m when i was coming home from work and she would talk to me on the phone so i had somebody to talk to because she knew how lonely i felt <clears throat> my family really like got me through i can't even tell you but even though i was sad i i was still i was going to church every sunday from this day on january 8th i went to church every sunday i went by myself I mean, I still knew people, I, you know, this is the church I grew up in, so I knew people, but I would go, I would sit by myself, I would take my notes, this was all my pastor, oddly enough, not oddly enough, because again, God is intentional, he did a whole series on faith, and I have like 10, 10 part faith series in here, where I just wrote it all down, and I meditated on it, and I studied it, and it was, that was me believing for better to come out of this, it was just like, again, God's so intentional, um, <clears throat> and you know i would go to church and I, I remember people would like see me and people that were like comfortable and close with me and they they knew you know about the breakup kind of because people would always ask you know oh where is he where is he and i have to say oh we're not together anymore oh we're not together anymore you know which was annoying but of course rightfully so they're gonna ask so um 
I remember there was one day, very early, early on after the breakup, someone came up to me. Was, they're like, you don't look so good. And I was like, yeah, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not so good, but thank you. Um, yeah, I was, I was really going through it. But again, I wouldn't take, I wouldn't take any of it back at all. Um, and I prayed, I remember, I've, I've said this in episode one of this podcast series, there was one day where I just couldn't take it anymore. I couldn't take the sadness, I, I just couldn't take it. And I, I remember it was a very early morning, it was like the first thing I did when I woke up, I prayed and I said, God, I can't, like, I, I need you to take this from me. I need you to give me peace. I need you to help me to just close this chapter because I am, I am struggling. And that day it was like someone flipped a switch. Not to say I never got sad again, but it was like night and day. Again, it was like someone flipped a switch. And I was changed. I had I had I had peace. And that's when I really started to accept the fact of like, okay, this was good. This was good for you. Like you needed this. And man, God has a way of he will he will wake you up when he needs to. And if that means ripping away a relationship from you that you thought was gonna be your everything and that was your future, he said, actually, no actually that's not for you and i think every time god takes something away from you it just means that he has something better for you but he has to get you ready to have it first because if he gives it to you but you're not ready to have it you're not going to be able to keep it okay i said i wasn't going to preach and here we are um but it's, it's true i i see it in myself i feel like i am in such a period of growth and change and entering a new chapter and let me tell you growth is uncomfortable but if it's not uncomfortable, you're not growing. That's another thing I've learned. So let me tell you, I'm in a period of growth. <laughs> because it's not comfortable most of the time. But it's a good thing. And so one of the things that God is shaping me in, like I said, is he's showing me that there are things of the world that I was looking to fulfill myself when that should be coming from him. My confidence, my self-worth, all that should come from him, not a man. And so that's something that I'm going to implement in whatever relationship comes next. So now I'm just looking at like rapid fire at the notes I have at the bottom of this. Um, you know, yeah. So on that same note, I actually wrote because I wanted to remember to say this. When I first started dating and I downloaded the apps, I wasn't even in the place I am now in my spiritual journey where if a hot, if a hot guy came around, and let me tell you, one did. And he was like, hey, come, come follow me. Like, let's, let's, let's do this. I would have gone. This was back in, when did I download the apps? April? May? Late April? Early May? I would have gone. And I probably would have put gone to the back burner again. I wasn't ready. And that's why things didn't work out. And it's funny, there was one that I thought was going to work out for a hot second. But God has a way of just being like, no, mm, no, not yet. And if it's not for you, I swear you like you can't you can't hold on to it. You can't keep it. It's just impossible. So now I'm on a point where I am on fire again. That's why I'm making these podcast episodes. That's why I genuinely I love waking up in the morning and reading my Bible for 20 minutes. I have a beautiful physical Bible that I have I haven't had a physical Bible in years and I have one now and I love it. I have my my little highlighters and I highlight and I take notes and I just it's genuinely it's not about what God can give me. Or what I could get from God. It's really just about like learning who he is. And it's like enjoyable for me now. And I think it's so much sweeter when you're searching for him. Not because you feel like you have to. But because you want to. And you're like falling in love with him on your own. It's so much more beautiful. And I'm not ashamed to say that I, I you know, it's this started because I was at such a low point in my life. And I didn't know what else to do. But let me tell you, it was the best decision I ever made. And so I have a couple scriptures here that I've like I've been reading. I read the book of Philippians and one re like stuck out to me. And I was like, I'm going to put this in my testimony video. It's Philippians 1.12. And it says, I want you to know, my dear brothers and sisters, that everything that has happened to me here has helped me to spread the good news. And I feel like everything that I went through this year and at the end of last year led me to this point where I'm learning so much and now I, I, I want to be a vessel to let it come through me and out to you guys. And I feel really passionate about that. Okay, this is about two hours later. I just left church. The very first verse that they talked about, 
today was Philippians 1.12, the very verse that I talked to you guys about. And there were so many obstacles that were trying to stop me from coming to church today. And that message was literally kind of what I was just talking to you guys about. I just God is crazy. I just needed to share that. Okay, continue with the video. And there's uh, lyrics, actually, that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, it's, by, it's a Brandon Lake song, and it's called Talking to Jesus. And I heard it for the first time in the car a couple weeks ago, and I cried my eyes out, <laughs> this song. But there's a bridge at the end where it says... There's no wrong way to do it. There's no bad time to start. Don't have to sound pretty. Just tell him what's on your heart. Because it's not a religion. Because it's more like a friendship. So just talk to your father like you are his kid. Even just saying that, it makes me want to cry again. It's just, oh, I get emotional because sometimes, I don't know. God's love really just smacks you in the face sometimes. <laughs> Where it's like, wow, he really, like, he loves me that much. And he, like, it doesn't have to sound pretty. You don't have to go to him and use words. You don't you, use, well, you should use words. You don't have to use big words. Just go talk to him. Like, like that's your dad. Just tell him what's on your mind. And I, I've done that so much in the last couple months. And it's just, I've seen how it changes your life. It could change your whole day. It's just, it's, it's mind blowing. And so, you know, people say, well, how do you know God is real? It's like, I've seen it. I've felt it. I've seen how he's changed my life. That's how I know that he's real. And I know that all of that that I went through was God calling me back to him. And like I said, he'll do whatever he take, whatever it takes to get your attention. And I wouldn't change it for the world. And I know I have so much growing to do and I'm, excited for it i really am i have two more scriptures here philippians 1 20 it says for i fully expect and hope that i will never be ashamed but that i will continue to be bold for christ as i have been in the past and i trust that my life will bring honor to christ whether i live or die and that's my prayer going forward is that whatever relationship comes into my life next whatever friendship whatever it is whatever circumstance i pray that i never i never walk away from him again and i never put him on the back burner that's my prayer i say to him all the time and when i was going when i was actively dating the last couple months, I would pray before every date. And I would say, one, if this isn't the guy that you have for me, Lord, let me know. Two, you know, let it not work out, whatever. Two, I would say, if this is if this, if this is the one, I pray that I still stay close to you, no matter what. I would pray that prayer because I've seen how things can come into your life and distract you from God. And I don't want that ever again because I see now that when I try to do life by myself without him, it don't work very well. <laughs> So, and then I have Psalm 32, 8, and it says, God will, God will guide me down the best path for my life. So that means everything you go through, nothing is wasted. And I'm going to do a podcast, a podcast episode on that. Nothing is wasted. Everything happens for a reason. There's no coincidence. Everything happens for a reason, and it plays a role, and it plays a part in your life, and it's meant to. My last relationship, it ended horribly. A lot of bridges burned. But I also trust that everything happens for a reason. And you know what? Maybe that bridge was just meant to be burned entirely. And just having that peace, like where everything happens for a reason, it just, it just changes the way you look at circumstances. It's like, oh, that guy didn't want to date me. That's okay. He, that's not the one that God has for me. That job, I didn't get that job. That's okay. That's the one that God, that's, God doesn't have that job for me. He has something better. And it's not always comfortable. Like I said, um, and so I'm just trying to trust that, you know, that God is in control. I saw something on TikTok the other day that it was like, you can relax on a bus, but you don't know the driver. You can relax on a cruise ship. You don't know the, the captain. You can relax on a plane and you don't know the pilot. So why can't I trust God who I actually know? So with that, it is a Sunday morning. I have to leave for church in like four minutes. So this was a long video, um, but a necessary one. I hope you guys got to know me a little bit better and I hope that you took something away from it. I hope you watched to the end. This was like one video where I really hope you watched the whole thing. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed making it. Sorry for getting a little emotional there. Kind of knew that was gonna happen. Um, 
but yeah to remember that i love you jesus loves you more and i'll see you guys in the next episode bye guys <laughs>